So Jan van Leiden has a lot of the hallmarks of your archetypical communist tyrant. Abolition of private property? Check. Cult of personality? Check. Strict censorship of dissent? Check. But then, hold on, you say, where's the constant push for industrialization? And is he basing this in Christianity? Wait, is this the Holy Roman Empire? Is capitalism even a thing yet? What fucking year is it? This video is part of a 19-channel collaboration called Project Revolution. More on that at the end. The year is 1517. Martin Luther just wrote his famous document, I think a few things in the church should probably be fixed, hoping to spark some scholarly debate and accidentally lit Europe on fire for two centuries. A few years later, in 1524, some peasants, well, actually a lot of peasants, said, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be following the authority of the Pope. W well, um, in fact, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, maybe we should push for greater equality. No, that is not what- In fact, Act, maybe it's high time we got control over our working conditions! Ah! 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 I swear to god I'm not with them. While this is going on, a man named Melkor was traveling around Europe preaching, at least when he wasn't snatching Silmarils. Based on his studies, he'd concluded that the end of the world was coming in 1533 and that Strasbourg would be the seat of the New Jerusalem. Spoilers, but 1533 came and went, and nothing. But luckily, Jan and his friend Jan, Matthias, came forward and said, No wait! Judgment Day is next year, but it'll be in Munster. And if God doesn't end the world by then, then by God we'll do it ourselves! Jan and Jan then find their way to Munster, where they meet with this guy who's recently turned it into a Lutheran city, and they ask him, you wanna turn this bitch up to 11? And he does. He sends out flyers across the HRE saying, God has spoken to Jan Matthias. Come to Munster and we'll give you free stuff. So religious converts and peasants come flocking in, nervous Catholics start to leave, these three now control the town council. They then destroy everything that might get in the way of true devotion and start burning books and smashing relics and making money illegal and we're going to exterminate the non-believers! We are going to banish the non-believers and then later we'll start exterminating. But if you convert now, you can keep your stuff at least until we get this communism thing worked out. So they kick out a bunch of the Catholics. The Prince Bishop, who unsurprisingly was Catholic, wants to get his town back, and all the nearby cities do not want this rebellion spreading, so he lays siege to his own town. Now a lot of the people in Munster are super excited about this whole communism thing and being God's chosen people and whatnot, but not everybody's loving being under siege. So Matthias tells Jan to execute the first guy who complains. Ah! Sorry. Oh, so God, why would you aim for the shoulder blade? Sorry, sorry, I'll just- ah! How are you still alive? Whoa, hey, we have a whole judicial system here. This guy did not go through a proper trial. I changed my mind, you're the captain now. You're the captain now. But Matthias' reign of terror was short-lived because one day he had a vision. And on Easter Sunday, he told the people, God has spoken to me again, and I have a plan. God of David, give me strength to overcome my foes. Is... is he coming to parlay? God of Shadrach, protect me from harm. I think... I think he wants to fight. God of Joshua, tear down the walls of all who- Fear not, citizens, for God has spoken to me, and he said that I should be in charge now, and hook up with Matthias's wife. The next thing he does is run around naked claiming he has a new revelation that the entire council should be replaced with people God has chosen. And together they write a bunch of new laws that say basically everything is punishable by death and only a pardon from Jan can save you. The one crime that he eventually dialed back on was adultery, perhaps because he'd been caught in bed with a chambermaid. Most autocrats would probably stop there, but not Van Leiden. He not only legalized polygamy, he made it mandatory. Orders direct from God. It took some time for the highly conservative, ultra-religious people of Munster to get used to that one, but God seemed to be on their side. The Prince Bishop's first attempt to break the siege was drunken and disorderly, and his second was washed out in a sudden storm. But when God spoke to a local blacksmith to tell him that Jan should be crowned the new David and eat the good food while the rest of the city was munching on boiled shoelaces, people started getting a bit suspicious. So Jan tells them, Fear not, for God has spoken to me, and he will deliver us from this siege before Easter. I meant spiritually. He will deliver us spiritually. Probably by death. 
Finally, one of Jan's apostles comes out and says, God has spoken to me, and he wants us to surrender. Eventually, a group of the Prince Bishop's soldiers sneak in and begin to negotiate with Jan, but then the rest of the army storms the front gate and finally manages to overcome the starving peasants inside. And they kill basically everybody, except for Jan and a couple of his friends, who are torn apart with hot irons. And once they were done, they threw their bodies in cages and hung them from the church steeple, where they remain to this day. The cages, not the bodies, but still. So much for taking over the world with an apocalyptic communist death cult. Since collaborations seem to be the only thing that get me to upload on schedule, why don't you support the good folks who brought you this video by watching the Project Revolution playlist? Don't know where to start? Why not Soliloquy's video on how William and Mary took over England? Or Brandon F's video on how soldiers went from being the scum of the earth to virtuous heroes? And if you want more from me, just hit subscribe and be prepared to wait. So long!